Hello everyone, it's Benny, and welcome back to the 3D game programming tutorial series. Last time, we continued our journey to create interactions, general interactions for our game world. And that entailed creating this new type of entity, the entity internal. Why do we have this new type of entity? Because this type of entity knows what sort of interactions it takes part of. And that will prevent us from having to determine what interactions every single entity interacts with every single frame. That's, yeah, it's a waste of time. We're not going to worry about that. So that's what we did last time, but we didn't quite finish. We got to the algorithm that computed interactions, and yeah, so we're going to continue that journey. We're going to finish up implementing computing interactions and then we're going to see if it's really as simple as it seems. There may or may not be a twist coming up. Let's get to it. All right, so the basic place to start is right where we left off. We finished the compute interactions method, but we're not using it anywhere. The most logical place to start using it, where we're adding entities, of course, that's where we need to compute interactions. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go through every single interaction we have. So for size t i equals zero, i is less than interactions dot size i plus plus. Straightforward as that. And what we're going to do is we're going to compute interactions with this entity at that index. And there you go. That will completely fill out all the interactions for this entity whenever we add new entity. Simple as that. No tricks. We also need to do a similar thing when we add a new interaction. So I'm going to change this a bit. I'm going to move this into interactionworld.cpp. So here we go. So this is going to be void interaction world add interaction. And there we go. There we go. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to do a similar sort of loop. We're going to loop this time not through all interactions, but through every entity. So entities.size. There we are. And what we're going to call do is call compute interactions with entities sub i with well this interaction. So interactions sub interactions dot size minus one because that's the one we just added, right? So there we go. We add entities, we add interactions. That's the basic idea. We can now, yeah, we can now add new entities and add new interactions, and they should be in line with, yeah, what we need. Now, as I hinted at, it's not quite this simple. There's a couple oddball things here and there that we'll need to take care of, namely adding and removing a component. So what happens if we add or remove a component and it's not a collider or transform. Here's the thing. That could suddenly cause this entity to match an interaction that it didn't before. So we need to account for that. But wait a minute. We're not being notified of components that aren't, well, you know, colliders or transforms. So whatever do we do? We make a slight modification to the um, ECS listener. So I'm going to go to ecs.hpp. We're just going to add a very basic thing. We're going to add two booleans. And it's going to be boolean. Actually, what should I call this? Uh, the general idea is we're going to make a boolean so that it, it will be notified of component updates regardless of type. It will ignore component IDs for adding or removing components. So I'll call it bool um, notify on all component operations, sure, which starts off equal to false. And same thing on for all entity operations. And like before, we're going to have a protected thing to set this. We're going to say void set notification settings, sure. It's not the really good method name at all, but, you know, it works. Take in bool, bool, 
should notify on all component operations and bool should notify on all entity operations. There we go. Very long names. Probably could come up with something better, but that's what I got right now. So that's what I'm going with. And yeah, it works very simply. Just literally set. There we are. So just like that, now we can set notification settings. So in interaction world, I'm going to go to the interaction and we're going to change the construct. Sorry, not interaction. Yeah, interaction world, we can change the interaction world to have the correct notification settings. So first of all, should notify all component operations? True, it should, but it should not notify all entity operations. And now we just need to change ECS to actually do this correctly. So add component, we're going to need to change this. Basically, what we're doing here is we're going through and making sure the component matches before we update. We don't need to do this if it should notify on all. So actually, I need a getter for it. So one moment, bool. Te all right, I just took a couple minutes to try to come up with a better name. It's not coming to me right now. That's all right. I can always come back and get a better name later. So I'm not that worried about it. So I'm going to say, just say, for my boolean method, bool should notify on all component operations. And this is going to return our boolean variable. And we should probably make it inline bool to avoid any potential compiler issues. There we go. Same thing here for except notify should notify on all entity operations. There we go. This is what we're going to test, well, in our updates. So when we add a component, what we do is right now we're going through everything, but again, we only want to check this if, well, we don't need to. So if listeners sub i arrow should notify on all component operations, then just call this and return because we're done. Sorry, not return. What am I saying? We don't we don't return because there can be more than one. And we'll just put this in else block. There we go. Yeah, we're just gonna add a similar quick bit of logic to remove component. So if listeners sub i should notify on all component operations, yeah then same thing except on remove component there we go whoops wrong tab sweet so that takes care of the components we've also added the feature for entities so we need to change make and remove entity so let's go ahead and do that under ecs.cpp so we're going to go to ecs.cpp and under make entity we're going to do similar bit of logic right here we're going through, yeah, we're going through and making sure the listener has both the components before it's valid. We don't necessarily need to do that. We can also just do a quick check here. If, first of all, I'm gonna just put the framework in. So if this condition is met, then we do this. Otherwise we do the bigger, more complicated check. And our condition as before is I'm going to copy it right from here. Notify on all component operators. Here we go. Listeners, I should notify on all entity operators. Yeah, if that's the case, then victory. We win. So we're going to do that and same check right here. Except we just change it to on remove entity. There we go. That takes care of all that optional nonsense and kerfuffery. That should be everything we need for the interactions to be in a consistently correct state. I'm going to double check just to be sure, but I'm pretty sure that's everything. All right, so I have finished my check. 
And there are two findings. Finding number one, where I did this, add interaction. Yeah, this takes in an index, so I don't need to do this. In fact, I can just say size t index equals this. There we go. So yeah, simple oversight, just compiler error. The other part is I got a little bit ahead of myself because although we're now being notified of every component addition and removal, we're not doing anything with the check. We're only responding to transform and collider components. So, uh, whoops. <laughs> Yeah, I just got a little ahead of myself, but that's okay. This is easy enough to do. We're going to change this to sort of an if-else-if chain. So if it's transform, then we'll do handle it. Otherwise, if it's com collider component, we'll do it. And then else. In the else condition, what we want to do is sort of both of these checks. We want to check if it has a collider component and if it has a transform component. So if it has both of these, then we do something. Otherwise, we don't care about what this is. So in fact, I can just make this an else, else if statement. What am I doing? So otherwise, if yeah, if it has both a transform and a collider, it's already an entity here, and that means we need to update it somehow. And yeah, this no longer needs to be a thing. There we go. There we go. Okay. Things are getting a little more organized now. Here, let's just tab correctly. There we go. So how do we handle this? We could go through the entire list and update, find this entity handle and update it right now, but we don't really want to do that for the same reason we don't really want to do the removal immediately. It's expensive to go through the list every time like that. So what we're going to do is have a similar list. Just like entities to remove, we're going to have a list of entity handles, except this one will be entities to update. So and we're going to change this to remove and update entities. So yeah, it's going to do both. So yeah, so first off, entities to update dot push back handle. There we go. Remove and update. Sorry. Remove entity. Not what it's going for, but whatever. I'll just scroll down. Thank you. <laughs> Remove add update entities. So change it right here where we process interactions. So sweet. Now we're removing and updating entities. Oh, I mean, that's what it's called now. We're not actually doing the updating yet. We are doing the removal. So there we go. So once we've removed the entities, we do want to do the removal first because if it tells us to update entity to be removed, well, you know, what's the point? There's no point updating an entity if we're only going to immediately remove it. So we're going to remove entities first, and then we're going to iterate through the to update list. So, in fact, just leave a comment. So, remove entities and update entities. There we go. To update. There we go. And I did do that guard check, didn't I? I'm pretty sure I did. Yes. Okay. Same guard check. But I forgot to do it in remove component. So we want we want to do this and we want to do the same sort of else if check. If it has both a transform and a collider component, then we're going to update the entity. We're going to, yeah, we're going to say we have to update it because something's been removed. It could be totally different now. So we're going to go through entities to update, and if entities sub i dot handle is equal to entities to update sub j, then we know, hey, we need to update this entity somehow. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say entities sub i dot interactors dot clear. Same thing for for interactees, and then we're just going to compute the um, Interactions again, yes. So then we just recompute the interactions. So compute interactions of entities sub i index. Right, we have to iterate for the list to do that. So excuse me. So then we're going to go through this list. So size t k we're at now. k is less than interactions dot size k plus plus. Yeah, we're going to compute interactions. 
yeah, entity sub i. That's the entity, and we want interactions sub k. So k is the index. I keep keep wanting to do that. No, we don't pass in the interaction. We pass in the index. So there we go. We will compute the interactions for all the interactions. Yeah, we compute the interactions for this entity. Yeah, among all the interactions. That's what we want. Good. And once we've done that, then we can say entities to update dot swap remove at index j. Because we don't need this anymore, and we don't really care about the order that these entities to update are in. Whoops. Yeah, we just need to do that. Now this does mean we need to change this check right here, where we have if did remove and entities dot to remove dot size equals zero. So what I'm gonna say here is I'm gonna just put a guard here. If entities dot to remove dot size. Well, yeah. Well, actually, I don't need to do the guard check, but what I do need to do is just add additional check here. And entities dot to update dot size is equal to zero. And in fact, I don't even need to do the did remove. So, yeah, just if both of them are equal to zero, we can return. And, yeah, so this should do what we want. And what else am I missing? I, I know I'm missing something. I do need to clear... Do I need to clear these at the end? Yeah, there's some somehow left over at the end. They're either duplicates or somehow they've been removed. So yeah, I do need to clear the list at the end. Beyond that, I think that's just about everything. This should be going through, yeah, every entity in the list. And ultimately, yeah, computing the interactions if they need to be recomputed. So this is doing what we expected to do. That is good. Now, with that, we have finally done all the major backend work of interactions and getting those working. So we can finally implement what happens if the AABBs intersect. We can finally determine if these entities are supposed to interact, and if so, make them interact correctly. How do we do that? Find out next time! I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned, and I will see you all in the next video. Don't forget there's an awesome Benny Discord you could join, and if you want early access to the next videos, you can become a patron on Patreon to do so. And a very, very special thank you to the patrons listed in the video description for making these videos possible. Thank you very much, and I will see you all next time.